Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the recording for section 2-3, and I'm going to begin with um, the same notes that I covered in class so that you have access to this information and that there is no overlap or, um, you know, confusion as to what we covered. And if you are one of my students from the blended class, this information also applies to you, and it is recorded by section, so you just simply need to click on the section that you need further review on. So again, this is section 2-3. We're looking at uh, equations of a line, which begins with a couple of examples or uh, definitions. So the first one is the slope-intercept form, and they begin to introduce that. And so we will discuss that. This is the one that you're used to seeing, y equals mx plus b. And the reason we call it slope-intercept, guess who that is? That's your slope. And here's your intercept. That's your b. Okay? And so in this case, we're going to look at uh, slope-intercept. We're always going to look, we're also going to look at point-slope form. And this point-slope formula is a derivation of the formula from the slope formula itself. So for example, you remember the slope formula where the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the point slope formula is simply uh, y2 minus y1 equal to slope times x2 minus x1. <coughs> If I were to take this equation and I were to multiply it by x2 minus x1 on both sides, just as you see me doing here, this cancels out on this side. And as you can see, this leaves you with y2 minus y1, which is what we have here, and then obviously the opposite side of the equation you can see that we have the slope times x2 minus x1, which is what we have here. All I've done is simply uh, switch it around, okay? Now, what we are going to do in this example is, um, in example one, is they're going to give us information. So they are going to start uh, with um, basically this question. So this is example one. And it says, in this case, given uh, 3x plus 4y equal to 4. Let me just double check one thing real quick. I don't want to have run out of space and I'm recording and nothing's being recorded. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the video. Um, in this case, if I am looking at, first of all, writing this in slope form, they're saying that uh, they're starting us off with this form, which we call standard form. So this is standard form. And it says write the equation Okay, so write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Which basically means that we need to write this such as y equals mx plus b form. And then it says, then find, so after you do this, then find the slope and the y-intercept. Alright, and so the first thing that you want to do, since we want this to look uh, like this in terms of the form, which is slope-intercept, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our equation 3x plus 4y equal to 4, and I need to remind you that I want y equals, so I need to move this x over. So I'm going to subtract the 3x on both sides. 
So I'm subtracting it on both sides of the equation. So if you notice, it will cancel on this side of the equation, and it will leave me uh, to work with at this time 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. The second thing I need to do is I need to divide by 4 because I want y by itself. So that's the only way I can get rid of the coefficient. Okay, and so once again, these guys cancel, and this reduces to 1. So technically, this also reduces to 1. So when I say cancel, it really is just a 1y. We don't write that in algebra. We assume that there is a 1 in front of here. But we don't write that. We think it's tacky. We also don't write the 1 after the variable if it's sitting by itself. We assume that the variable exists, so it's there. So this is equal to negative 3 over 4 x plus 1. Now, the slope in this case happens to be the slope is equal to negative 3 over 4. Remember, this is the change in y over the change in x. My y-intercept always is this value. So in this case, that's the value for y. Hence, y-intercept. So our answer, to answer this part of the equation, the intercept, the intercept is the point where x is 0 and that value, whatever this value is, is assumed here. Okay? Okay, so you would do the same thing for any other question. Okay, so we'll go to example 2. In example 2, they're changing the question stem a little bit. And they're saying, given the equation, and they're going to give you the equation in slope-intercept form, they're going to say y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 1. Given the equation using, so we want to graph, not given, we want to graph, my apologies, we're going to graph the equation given, uh, in this case, the y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1 using the slope and the y-intercept. So if that's the case, then there's a couple of ways we're going to approach this. Now, the first way is to identify the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, in our case, is equal to uh, the point 0, 1. Remember what I said to you. When x is 0, this all goes away, leaving you y equal to 1. But, with that, but first, you need to assume that y, x is 0, so that when you multiply x times that slope, you get 0 for an answer. The second thing you need to identify is the slope itself, which is negative 3 over 4, which means that the change of y is negative 3, and the change of x is positive 4. So if I'm looking at this in an xy grid, I'm going to start with 0, 1, and then my slope, which means that x is changing by positive 4 and y is changing by negative 3, all right, results in my next point. My next point should be 4, negative 2. If I, instead of graphing it this way, use the counting method, I could do that too. All right, and I'm going to use a rough, rough graph of this. So, given the y-intercept is 0, 1, that's just the point, 0, 1, the next point is where x is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and in this case y is negative 2, which is right about here. So this is the point 4, negative 2, and this is your point 0, 1. Okay? And next we connect the points, and there you go. That should be about what the line should look like. Do you also notice that if I counted, I could also do that? So if I start at the intercept, I'm going to go down one, two, three points, right? Because this is going down three units. 
And then from here, I'm going to move over one, two, three, four units going this way. So this is positive four. So I go to the right. All right? All right, example three. In example three, it says uh, you're given two lines, line one, line two. We are to determine if they are parallel, if they are perpendicular, perpendicular, or neither. All right, and so how we do this is very easy. If I have two lines, okay, so let me let me do this do this example this way. If I have two lines and I am trying to determine if they are parallel. If they are parallel, those lines have to be equidistant from each other, kind of like train tracks. They are also going to have the same slope. Now, listen to what I'm saying. The slope is always next to the x, so I don't care about the y-intercept. That is irrelevant to me. So if line 1 <coughs> happens to be y equals 1 half x minus 2, and line 2 happens to be y equals 1 half x plus 14, for example, this is an example of parallel lines because they share the same slope. Same slope. Muy importante. If they are perpendicular, the difference in the perpendicular slopes is very simple. The slopes are negative negative reciprocals okay so reciprocal ba basically means the fraction gets flipped around of each other right so the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other okay what that means to me if I have line one and I have line two and line 1 happens to be y equals negative 3x plus 4. What you need to remember is, is this is really negative 3 over 1, right? If line 2 is perpendicular, then y is equal to positive 1 over 3x plus whatever number. So let's call it 8, since I kind of made an 8 there. So what do you notice here? The opposite signs and the fractions are flipped around. So that's what negative reciprocal indicates. Now, if they are neither, if they are neither perpendicular nor parallel, you would have a variety of things happening. For example, in this case, line one and line two for a neither would be something like if I have one half x uh, plus two for one line, and for the other line I have 2x minus 3, as an example. So you do notice that this is a reciprocal, but they do not have opposite signs, which is one of the criteria for perpendicular. So it, for it to be parallel, it has to have the same slope. For it to be perpendicular, you have to have the negative reciprocal. So if the sign is off, like in this case, there is no change of sign, then we know it's a neither. Okay, example four. In example four, they are basically asking you to use the slope intercept form to find to find an equation of the line with slope and they're giving the slope um, 
the slope of negative 3 and passing through the point 1, negative 4. So I'm going to show you actually two examples at once. So this is also example 5. So I'm going to do both. Let me explain. If I use slope intercept, this is what they're doing in example 4. Okay? If they're using the point slope, that's what they're asking you to use in example 5. Okay? So we're going to do both side by side so you can see, make a connection. I think this will help you. So slope intercept is where we use y equals mx plus b. We have the slope. That's your slope. That's your m. And they're giving you two points. They're giving you a 1 for the x. And they're giving you, let's use a nice like color like this. Oh, that's lovely. Let me use that for a second. I want to use the, the blue for negative 4, which is your y. What do I need to find? I need to find b first before I complete this entirety of, of the question. So in this case, negative 4 is equal to my slope, which is negative 3, times 1, which is my x, plus b. Again, I don't know b. We're going to find b. I have the slope. We said that was negative 3. I have the y value, which is negative 4. And we have the x value that we're using, which is positive 1. Which makes our life very easy, actually, given that it's 1. So in this example, I have negative 4 is equal to negative 3 plus b. If I get rid of the, the 3 by adding it, <coughs> so I'll add this 3 here. And I'm going to add this 3 here. This gives me b equals negative 1. And so my equation for this to answer this question would simply be y equals negative 3x minus 1. Done. Now watch. As I do example 5 side by side, this is example 5 here, they're asking us to use the point slope, which basically says we're going to use this format. Okay? Now what I want you to remember in the point slope is that whatever point you use, you're actually filling in this value and this value respectively, and then obviously the slope, whatever it is. These two stay open, okay? Given that I have uh, all of the variables that I need, so this is going to become, uh, in essence, y minus minus 4 equal to negative 3 times 1 minus, I'm sorry, x minus 1. Okay, so if you look where the letters are coming, or the values are coming from, notice that this is your x. Notice that this is your, sorry, this is your slope. And this is your y. Okay, so you have to be careful with the, with the actual um, signs. Now remember, double negatives become a positive, so that's a plus. And here, you're going to distribute that negative 3 to both of those values. So you end up over here with y plus 4 equal to negative 3x plus 3. Negative 3 times positive x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Your last step is simply to subtract 4 on both sides. Okay, remember we're subtracting 4 so that we can actually finish this equation, which is now going to read y equals negative 3x minus 1. Notice how you got the same answer using two different approaches. So that's example 5. Okay, now, 
the last uh, couple of examples are very easy to remember. You have example six, where they're asking you to find the equation. So find the equation given two points. So they're going to give you five negative one for this example and three one for the other example and it says write the answer when you're done in slope intercept form. Okay, so when you see this question, step number one is to find the slope. And they do give you this question in a graph as well, just for the record. So find the slope. So we're going to label this x1, y1, x2, y2, and we're going to use our slope formula, which slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we get 1 minus minus 1 over 3 minus 5. Remember, two negatives side by side followed give you a positive. So this is really 2 over negative 2, and your final answer is negative 1. That's your slope. Now that I have the slope, step 2 is to select the point select one point and use the slope okay so and the slope I'll put just put M to find B we need to find that intercept without the intercept we're lost so in this case we're gonna say um, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna it doesn't matter by the way which point you use so I'm gonna use the 3 1 I'm using point 3 comma 1 and the slope equal to negative 1. Remember this is x, this is y. So if I use y equals mx plus b, then that means that 1 is equal to negative 1 times 3 plus b, which means that I have 1 equals negative 3 plus b, and if I add the 3 on both sides. So if I add the 3 here and I add the 3 here, I get B is equal to positive 4. Okay? And so your last step is using your slope and B, write the equation. So this becomes Y equals negative X, hence negative 1 times X plus 4 and that's your answer. So you see that's actually just a few steps. I know it's new to you so you're probably a little overwhelmed but it's basic. It's something easy to do and remember. So write down the notes and become familiar with this information. Okay, question number seven. So basically in example seven it says find the equation find an equation of a line parallel to another so if it is parallel it has to have the same slope okay and now they do give you the information that you need the information in this case is um, you're given negative 2, negative 3 to start. They want it to be parallel, so the slope of line 1 has to equal the slope of line 2. And then they give you the actual equation for line 1, which is 4x plus y equal to 8. So in this one, step 1, is to find the slope for this line right here. To do so, I need to move stuff around. So I'm going to have y equals negative 4x 
plus eight, so therefore the slope has to be negative. Oops, the slope has to be negative four, right? If this is the slope for this line, then all I need to do in step two is plug in the points for y equals mx plus b and use the slope that I have from line 1. Because remember, this is line 1. So this will become our line 2 eventually, right? So negative 3 is equal to negative 4 times negative 2 plus b. We need to find b so we can figure out this line. That gives us negative 3 is equal to positive 8 plus b. And if I subtract 8 on both sides, then b is equal to negative 11. Wonderful. So I have the slope, and I have, and I have b. So line 2 is actually y equals negative 4x minus 11, and that's your answer. You would apply the same process for perpendicular, which is the next example. And in that example, you just need to remember that if it's perpendicular, the values are negative reciprocals of one another, right? And so in this case, um, in example 8, it says find an equation. Okay, sorry about that. Find an equation of the line... passing through the point and the point being 4, 3 and perpendicular to to the line, and in this case, they're giving you 2x plus 3y equal to 3, and they want you to finish it off in the slope-intercept form. So let's find the slope using the <coughs> step. So step number one, um, if I have 2x plus 3y equal to 3, I have to find the slope of this line, so let's call this line 1. And so, in this case, if I subtract 2x on both sides, I end up with 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. And last step would be to divide by 3, because I need that to be by itself, that y, right? Because that becomes 1, so it is this. So this line 1 gives me a y1 that's equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 1. So the slope for the first line is negative 2 thirds. Now, that means that if I want this to be perpendicular, that slope has to be, for line 2, if it's perpendicular, that slope 2 has to be the positive of 3 over 2. Okay, so now we use the point which is uh, 4 comma 3, which is given to us right here. And we're going to say y equals mx plus b, and we're going to plug it in and solve for b, because that's the only other piece we need. So in this case, 3 is equal to 3 over 2 times 4 over 1 plus b. Now, if you pay attention to this part, I promise you this is super easy. It's just old fraction stuff that you might not remember. If I'm multiplying across, this is 12 over 2, which is 6, basically. So you have 3 is equal to 6 plus b, and therefore I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides, and b by itself is equal to negative 3. So now I have the slope, and I have my b, and my new equation is y equals 3 over 2x minus 
3 and you're done with that equation. Okay? Okay. The next question or the next example is actually very easy. It has to do with vertical lines. So example 9, find the equation of a line. And so it says find um, an equation find an equation of the line passing how did that happen? of the line passing through the point negative one negative four comma one and perpendicular perpendicular to the x-axis okay so in this case let's draw the picture and you'll see what I'm talking about so it's going through negative 4 1 1 2 3 4 up 1 so the point is here, and it's perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, this is the x-axis. And in this case, the only way that that can happen is if this line were vertical going through x is negative 4. Okay? All right. So much for steady hands. And that's it for this section. All right.